Today, I'm gonna to talk about the one project that you can build to get that first mobile development job. So a lot of people on the, on the YouTube channel, in the comments, you want us to pay attention to other types of development and mobile being one of those big ones. And specifically, we had a YouTuber comment asking us like, hey, you know what? I just got out of my Udacity degree and I can't find an iOS job. What should I do? So we're gonna give you the too long, didn't watch portion of this right now. So we're gonna give you the one project right now that you should build that I think would add a lot of credibility to your portfolio. So I want you to think about building this, a ticket management app for service technician professionals. In other words, if you call out a plumber or cable TV repair and they come to your house, what is that mobile app that you need to build to facilitate that job? I think if you build that, you'll go a long way into showing that you're an enterprise mobile developer. So if you wanna know why you should build this and you wanna know exactly what the features of this app are, and then kind of summing it up with how you should build it and what technology you should use, keep watching. So when you're building your mobile application portfolio and you wanna demonstrate your skills to in an interview situation or even have this really great portfolio that someone would actually call you back on, or signing up with a recruiter or whatever, you need to have an application that resonates with either the recruiter or the employer. And here's what I want you to think about. So mobile application development started in kind of like 07 when Steve Jobs said, hey, the iPhone's gonna rule the planet, and he was right. And here it is. <laughs> and so now what we've seen through the enterprise is, um, budgets are being established now, we need to roll this out to the mobile application form. So like um, before and say in the last five years, it wasn't a guarantee that everyone, every single person had a mobile device. And when you're sitting here today at 2019 or 2020, that's not the case. Probably eight year olds are walking around with iPhone 10. Everyone has a mobile device. So it makes sense that enterprises are now getting around to the fact of, hey, what do we do in the mobile space? What is our application? What do we do? We need to extend this service to that and this service to that. So what this is gonna do is drive a lot more demand for iOS and Android development, the two dominant mobile platforms that we have today. And so what I think you need to demonstrate is not your ability to actually just build any kind of app, because in oh, if you're talking about 2008 or 2009, that probably was sufficient. Hey, look at this mobile app that I just got working and I deployed to the store, and that was good. But now when you're, you're looking across the room to a hiring manager who's trying to build something very complex, tic-tac-toe or flappy birds just isn't going to cut it. What you need to show them is your ability to deliver what I would call an enterprise mobile application. And so when I talk about building the, the mobile ticket service professional, or we call it Ticket Pro at Coder Foundry, what we want you to build is something that solves a very complex business problem that solves all the things that you need to do in order for this hiring manager to say, okay, I believe this person could roll out my mobile app. Um, and so I want you to think about it. We need to build a enterprise mobile application and roll that out and show that to the hiring manager. And so next, let me tell you the exact features that I think need to be present in any kind of demo that you put on your portfolio. Okay, so if you stuck with me, let me give you the use case for this application. Um, how would it be used so you can get a good handle of what you're trying to build for this. And, um, and if we talked a little bit about like why you should build it, now let's talk about actually what you're gonna try to build. So I want you to think about this. Let's say that you have a leak in your house or that the cable TV is out and you need to call in a technician to fix something. Now, if you're in another part of the world and this doesn't make sense to you, kind of um, anything that, that someone has to come to a remote location will work. But inside the US, this is a very common occurrence. We have to call the plumber or call the cable TV repair person, okay? So when you call in, they're gonna create something called a ticket or a work order. Okay, attached to that work order will be the address that the technician needs to go to to perform the service. And so now this ticket gets created and then that is assigned to the work order. And so it'll appear, the work order gets assigned to the technician. And so the technician has a mobile device that pops up on his phone and say, hey, you have a work order to complete, here's the address. 
it goes to the address and then he completes the work order and then the round trip it's closed. So that is the scenario or the use case sets we're going to build. So let's next talk about the actual features that this application should have. So if you stayed with me now, let's talk about the actual features, the actual things that this mobile app needs to do that I think it needs to do in order to really blow away the hiring manager. The first thing it needs to do obviously is take in a request. And so this person needs to kind of authenticate to the application and take a request, or you can build a website to fulfill the request taking part which would actually be very cool if you do that. So there could be a web component to this. Once that request is taken, the key thing that you want to do is take the address of the location of the service that needs to be performed. And I want you to perform geolocation. In other words, create a Latin long to this address. Now, the reason you need this is because your service technicians and inside your application, you need to take more than one. You need to have a couple or three service locations and then assign those service locations to a geographical area. Okay, you can do this by county, you can do it by state, you could set up a geofence, some way where they work inside of an area. Then when the ticket comes in, it has a Latin long, and then the big feature that it needs to do is discover which service technician this ticket should automatically be assigned to based on geographic location. So you're taking the lat long and you're seeing if that point exists inside of these work areas that you've assigned to technicians. Okay. So I think that's a very important and cool enterprise feature that you need to do. The second thing that this needs to do is once it's assigned, one of the cool factors or the wow factor that you can do is you take the service address that you have and then create turn by turn instructions for the service technician so that he can actually get directions to get to the house or the location where the ticket needs to be performed. And then finally, once you're there, the other feature that this needs to do is utilize the camera to take a photo of the completed work, maybe the plumbing or I've repaired the, the cable in the ground or whatever. They take a photo and then that photo goes from the phone and then it gets attached to the ticket so that the completed work order has it's marked complete and it has a photo of the completed work. And all of that is kind of the round trip that you need to do. Now there's a couple of other kind of very high level features that it needs to support as well. I think offline mode is a must for this. So implement something like SQLite that can store the, the work orders on the person's device. And if they're out of range, they can still complete the order, take the picture, do whatever but when they come in range, it automatically syncs back into the main database. And that means also that you must have a central store of SQL or something like that, that holds all of these tickets that are being coming in. And finally, you probably need to build some kind of web admin to look at all tickets or accept tickets. Um, I think this whole system, if you put it together, would be super impressive to a hiring manager. And believe it or not, I think that since we've built this in Coder Foundry, I don't think it's that difficult to build. It may take you several weeks, especially if you already know how to build mobile apps. If you're trying to do this as a learning option, it may take you longer. So Service Ticket Pro is an application that's going to impress that hiring manager. But let's talk about next what you need to build it with. So now that you've, you've set through this and you, I've shown you or told you about what you need to build, and I hope that you're kind of motivated to do that, let's talk about what you should build it with. Now, obviously, if you're coming out of the nano degree like the guy we talked about, and you already have skills to build iOS apps with Swift or something like that, then that's the language that you're going to gravitate to first. Okay. If you're going to target an Android platform, that's either currently right now, Java or Kotlin, you need to use one of those two things. Now, um, if you know one of those and that's all, you know, what I want to coach you on is use that to build your mobile app, get it on a web page or portfolio and find a way to demo it. Okay. We're gonna talk about demo in a second, but I want you to also keep your eye on this. Um, the one thing that you need to start considering, especially if you're already working as iOS developer or you're already working as an Android developer, is you need to start looking into what am I going to do to be a cross-platform mobile developer? Because I think as enterprises adopt these projects, the, the enterprise is going to make the decision is, you know, I don't want to build a specific iOS team and a specific Android team. 
I feel like deployment should be an option and it's a build option. I should be able to build my application and then employ it to the both platforms at the same time with one common code base. And there's three kind of three things out right now that you can pick from, maybe four. Um, you can use Xamarin, which is C-sharp skills. You can use React Native. You can use Iconic. And also there's Kotlin Native, which is the newest thing out, which probably isn't ready for prime time, but um, you could look in that further and I'm sure that they're gonna come along and build that. Um, the one thing that I do want you to consider is Xamarin, and this is why. Because Xamarin is going to use a C-sharp backend. I know, big surprise. But if you think about an enterprise launching a mobile application development effort, and they're already using ASP.NET, MVC inside their house, they're probably going to transition those developers also into development, and they'll want to use C-sharp to do that. I can't guarantee that, but we're seeing an increasingly amount of demand for Xamarin skills. But React Native has been around since 2015, and there's other players coming online as well. And so let's talk a little bit about how do I demo this to bring home that job offer. So you've got your application built, you put it on your portfolio, and you actually got a callback, and you actually are walking into the technical interview. I want to tell you how you should demo this in order to steal it home to actually get a job offer. If you're not working with a recruiter, hopefully you've shown your portfolio already to a recruiter and you're working with a recruiter to get you in the door. But let's say no matter how you got there, through sheer act of will, you've got to the interview. So let's talk about how you demo this. The first thing you need to do is when you walk in is you ask them to look at your mobile project and ask them if they wanna see a demo. Second, I'm hoping you've published this to a store, either in the Play Store or the iOS Store, regardless of how you built it, and ask them to download your app. Get the hiring manager to submit a ticket, and then that's gonna assign it to you. You work the ticket, you take a picture of the room that you're in, you close it, and then the, the notification hits him on his own phone, his device. I can tell you this right now, more than likely if you make him use your app, and it works, you're gonna get hired. It shows that you have complete knowledge from front end to back end and it's already working. So think about demoing the app by getting the hiring manager to actually use it. Which means if you're not cross-platform, you gotta hope that he either has an Android device, he built Android, or he has an iOS device if he doesn't. But let's say that you don't wanna take that chance. You can bring an old device with you, like you know your iPhone 6 or 7, the one that you have, kind of in your desk or whatever, and pre-install it and just hand him that device and then use your device to work it. And that way he has a device that he can use. He doesn't have to download on his phone, but he can see, he gets the same experience. He can see it work. So the trick is, is to get him using your mobile application in an enterprise setting and showing him how it works. And I think that is very, very powerful. Anyway, I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding. <laughs>